Now what we're going to do in section 4.2 is we're going to look at those tree diagrams that we used in 4.1 and we're going to try to draw some general conclusions because tree diagrams get big fast and we don't want to have to use them all the time for counting so we want to try to observe some patterns. So the first thing you need to understand is that when we have a multiple part task like a three part task it's said to satisfy the uniformity criterion if the number of choices for any particular part is the same no matter which choices were selected for previous parts. So let's look at two tree diagrams to see which are which of these multi-part tasks have the uniformity we would like. You might recognize this tree diagram from when we were sit seating Arnie, Bobette, Chuck, and Deirdre in a, four seats in a theater. And this is a tree diagram for constructing three digit numbers from the digits one, two, and three without repetition. The diagram on the left, observe that if Arnie sat down, remember there was only one option for who sat in the next seat, and that was Bobette because they had to sit next to each other. On the other hand, if Chuck sat down, there were three possibilities for who sat in the next seat, Arnie, Bobette, and Deirdre. On the other hand, so there's a difference between how many uh, possibilities occur in the next step depending on who was seated in the previous step. On the other hand, in diagram two, that doesn't happen. You can see, for example, going from the first digit to the second digit, no matter which digit was chosen for the first digit, we still have the same number, not the same options, but the same number of options for the second digit. So which one do you think represents a situation where we have uniformity. It would be diagram two, right? Where the number of, of uh, outcomes possible in the next part of the task does not depend on which option we chose in the previous part. So when the number of choices is different depending on the previous choice, you do not have uniformity. Only diagram two is uniform. Now this is going to be important to us because it helps us to find a shortcut. Shortcuts are good, right? All right, I'm not even going to read this definition to you for the fundamental counting principle until we look at a numerical example because it just looks scary and overwhelming, but it really is not um, so bad. So here's the tree diagram for when we're constructing um, three digit numbers using the digits one, two, and three we came up with six possibilities. We broke the task down into parts. There were three ways to pick the first digit, and then no matter which of the first digits we picked, there were two ways to pick the second digit, and then no matter which we had picked for the first and second, there was only one remaining possibility for the third digit. Notice that three times two times one is six, and there were six possibilities. That's not a coincidence. When you have uniformity, you can multiply the number of ways to do each part of the task. So <clears throat> that's what this fundamental counting principle is telling us up above. It says when a task consists of k separate parts and satisfies the uniformity criterion, if the first part can be done in n1 ways, the second part can be done in n2 ways, and so on through k, then which can be done in nk ways, then the total number of ways to complete the task is just the product n1 times n2 times n3 times all the way up to nk. However many parts, it doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter if it's a three part, four part, five part task. Instead of using the tree diagram, if you have uniformity, you can just multiply the number of ways to do each part. So as an example of using this idea, how many two-digit numbers can be made from the set 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? So keep in mind whenever you're asked to construct numbers, two-digit numbers, three-digit numbers, it doesn't matter how many digits, the number of ways to construct um, the first digit is limited by the fact that we never start a number with zero in our number system. So you just have to keep that in mind. All right, so this is actually a two-part task, but instead of using a product table, we are going to use the fundamental counting principle. So what you do is you break down your task into two parts. 
the first part is selecting the first digit and the second part is selecting the second digit. How many options do we have for the first digit? Well, since uh, zero can't be used, we can use one, two, three, four, or five. So there are five options for the first digit. And how many options are there for the second digit? Well, notice it did not say that repetition is not allowed, and it has to specify that. So um, I'm going to assume that repetition is allowed. So um, what we're going to do is select from all the digits. It's okay to have a zero as a second digit, right? We could get the number 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So there are six options for the second digit. So if you multiply five times six, equals 30 two-digit numbers. Now, how do I know that we have uniformity? Well, in fact, if you can answer the question, how many ways are there to select the second digit, and you don't have to say, well, it depends on what we picked for the first digit, then uniformity is, um, then we have uniformity. So you'll know if you run into a case where you don't have uniformity because you'll, you'll have some ambiguity about how many options you have and you just won't be able to answer that question. All right, how many two-digit numbers that do not contain repeated digits can be made from this set? So we're still going to break the task down into two parts, selecting the first digit and selecting the second digit. We still have to keep in mind that the first digit cannot be zero. So there are only five possibilities for the first digit. But now when we go to select the second digit, we can't select the same digit that we did from in the first. So d do we have uniformity? Can we answer that question? How many options do we have? Or does it depend on what we selected for the first digit? In fact, it doesn't matter what we selected for the first digit, we'll always have all the remaining digits left. So for example, suppose we picked three for our first digit. How many options do we have for the second? One, two, three, four, five options left. But let's suppose that we picked four for our first digit. Well, we still have one, two, three, four, five options left. No matter what we picked for our first digit, there will still be five digits left. We only have to leave off that one digit that we use. We don't know which one it is that we're leaving off, but it doesn't matter as long as we know the number of options. So there are five times five equals 25 two digit numbers where we don't allow repeated digits. Okay, so now let's look at another context where we could apply the fundamental counting principle. How many ways can you select two letters followed by three digits for an ID? All right, so we're gonna break this task down into five parts, selecting the first letter, the second letter, the first digit, the second digit, and the third digit. So we just need to count how many possibilities we have. Notice that we don't have any restrictions like the first digit can't be zero because we're not talking about constructing a number. This is an ID tag, right? Like think of it like a license plate. It doesn't matter if you have a zero at the beginning or not. All right, we do need to know how many letters are in the alphabet. So there's 26 letters in the alphabet. So when we select our first letter, we have 26 options. Now, is repetition allowed in this case? Yes, because it didn't say it wasn't. They have to specify that, um, or the context has to demand it, which it doesn't. You can have IDs that have, you know, AA at the beginning of them. So we're going to say there are still 26 options for the second letter. Then we're gonna pick the first digit. Again, this is not the first digit of a counting number. This is just a digit on a, an ID. So we can include zero. So how many digits are there in our system of counting numbers? There are 10. The digits are referring to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now no matter which digit we pick for the first digit, we can still pick 
it for the second or for the third. So there's always 10 options there. So you multiply 26 times 26 times 10 times 10 times 10, and you get 676,000 different IDs that are possible. That is the step where we applied the fundamental counting principle. We just multiplied the number of ways to do each part. What if I asked you how many three digit numbers are there in our system of counting numbers? This would be an example if we were in class, I would have you try to work this at your desk. The first one, not the second one. We're going to talk about the second one together. So if uh, you're at home watching this on video, a video recording, this would be a good time for you to pause the video and try to work this problem, see if you can figure it out. All right, so now I'm gonna work it out. How many three digit numbers are there in our system of counting numbers? What I like to do when I'm working it out at home is I make a little dash for each of the digits. And I'm not actually constructing numbers, I'm counting how many are possible. Remember that the digits we have to work with are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So there are 10 of them, but this can never be the first digit. 0 can never be the first digit, because then it would really be a two digit number, right? So when I count the number of ways to select my first digit, I only have nine of them. But once I have picked my first digit, how many ways are there to pick my second digit? Well, they didn't say there was no repetition or anything like that. So we can have any of the 10 digits we want. Zero is okay, right, for a second digit and for a third digit. So there are 10 of those as well. So 9 times 10 times 10 equals 900 three-digit counting numbers in our system of counting numbers. Now, is this the only way to do this? No, definitely not. Um, for example, in the previous chapter, we counted the numbers in a set, right? And what set are we talking about here? The first three-digit number is 100, and the last three-digit number is 999. We could compare that set, the set of all three digit counting numbers, to the set that goes from one up to 99 and then picks up 100 through 999. And you can see that this set has 999 numbers in it. So the number of elements in that set was 999. How many of them do we have to remove in order to get the set from 100 to 999? We have to remove 99 of them. So that would be 999 minus 99 equals 900. So that would be another way to answer the question. But this is the way using the FCP, the Fundamental Counting Principle. All right, so now how many odd non-repeating four-digit counting numbers are there? So this is a much more challenging question because we have so many restrictions. One, we want our, our number to be odd, which means that it has to end in a one, a three, a five, a seven, or a nine, right? If it ends in a zero, two, four, six, or eight, then we have an even number. It also has to be non-repeating. So that means that once we use a digit, we can't use it again, okay? It's a four digit number, so I'm going to draw my four parts to my task. This being the first digit, second digit, third digit, fourth digit. And then remember that um, we're choosing from zero through nine, which are 10 digits, but we are not allowed to have a zero in the first digit. So that leaves only nine possibilities, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. And then we go on to the second digit. Since it's non-repeating and we just used one of the numbers in this set, right? Then we have 10 digits to choose from, but we used one of them. So we're not allowed to use the first digit. So that would leave nine possibilities there. Zero plus the eight other options. And then for the third digit, we don't have the restriction of not zero again, but we can't have either the first or the second 
digits repeat. So out of this set of 10 digits, we have to take two away. So there are only eight left. And now we come to the fourth digit. And for the fourth digit, remember, we want this number to be an odd number. Odd numbers are numbers that end in an odd digit. This is an example of an odd four digit number. It has to end in an odd digit. There are only one, two, three, four, five odd digits. So you might think that I would write a five here, but you're wrong. In fact, I don't know what to write here, and here's why. Because I might have used a one, a three, and a five as my first three digits, in which case um, I only have two numbers left to use, a seven or a nine. Or I might have used a two, a four, and a six as my first three digits, and then I have all five of the digits left, or something in between. So here's the problem. I don't know. It depends on what I chose for the previous numbers. So this would not be uniform. Okay, so you got two options. One, you can use a tree diagram and try and list out all the possibilities, which would be enormous, by the way. It would be really hard to keep track. Or you can try to break down the task in a different way. See, it doesn't really matter if I pick my first digit first and then go and pick my second digit, or if I pick my second digit and then go back and pick the first digit. So there's a little trick that you can do. You can rearrange the order in which you um, approach the problem and start with whatever has the most restrictions. So for our problem, I'm going to actually pick the fourth digit first because then I know exactly that the fourth digit has five options. The fourth digit has to be odd, so we only have five options for that. Then what's the next most restricted um, digit? Well, the first digit has a restriction. It can't be zero. Now, does that cause a conflict here? No, because I know that the fourth digit wasn't zero. It was one, three, five, seven, or nine. I'm going to pick something that's not zero, but also it's not the fourth digit. Taking out from my set zero through nine, taking out zero and taking out whatever digit we used, one of the odd digits, how many digits are left? Well, that would leave eight of the 10 left. Okay, then I'm gonna pick my second digit. My second digit can be zero, but it can't be what we used for the fourth digit and it can't be what we used for the first digit. So out of those 10 digits, again, there are two that we can't use. So that's going to be eight left there. And then to pick our third digit, we can't use the fourth, we can't use the first, and we cannot use the second digit. So out of our 10 digits, we have 10 minus three is seven digits left that we can use. So we have uniformity. We've achieved uniformity just by approaching the problem in a different order. So we can multiply five times eight times eight times seven, and we'll see what we get. I'm going to clear the ink on this slide and show you we get 2,240. Okay, so that's how you can apply the fundamental counting principle. You have to pay attention to the order in which you do things so that you have uniformity. If the video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.